Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide, Mohamed Niaz with you. In this video, we're going to see how to set up Microsoft Hyper-V failover cluster with Windows Server 2016. Failover cluster is a hot topic for Microsoft system administrator as it is an inbox feature for Microsoft uh, to protect your virtual machines from any host failure. So the topic is prepared in a way to give you a complete understanding on how to set up a failover cluster from scratch. We're going to start with what is a failover cluster, how to set up a failover cluster, what are the requirements, network design, storage, then a step-by-step -step demo on how to configure a Windows failover cluster with Windows Server 2016. At the end of this video, you will learn how to design and how to implement a Windows Server failover cluster. What is a failover? A failover means it's the ability to switch automatically to a reliable system in case of a failure. When it comes to virtual machines and Hyper-V, a Hyper-V failover cluster means it's the ability of virtual machines to switch to a reliable Hyper-V host in case of any failure on the running host. So Microsoft Hyper-V and failover cluster are two separate features or two separate technologies from Microsoft. Both work together and protect your virtual machines from host failure. Why I said it's a combined technology because failover cluster also work with SQL, Exchange Server, File Server and some other Microsoft technologies to provide failover feature and to achieve high availability for their applications. So for high availability of your virtual machines or to protect your virtual machines from any host failure, Hyper-V and failover cluster features work together to fail over the workloads to a reliable server in the cluster group. Before we talk about virtual machine automated failover, what if, if I want to move a virtual machine from Hyper-V1 host to Hyper-V2? I have to move all the files that makes a virtual machine from Hyper-V1 local storage to Hyper-V2. And moving these files over the network takes some time because the minimum you have to move a 20 GB data from Hyper-V1 to Hyper-V2. What if, if the Hyper-V1 is not accessible, if there is any failure on Hyper-V1, then moving this data is going to be impossible as the local storage is not accessible. So the best idea is to place the virtual machine files in a place where Hyper-V1 and Hyper-V2 can access. At the same time, if there is any failure on Hyper-V1, the data is going to be available and Hyper-V2 can access it and start up the virtual machines. That brings a concept of shared storage. So let us put a shared storage into the design. A shared storage means it's a dedicated storage appliance contains more number of hard disks than the regular servers and designed to handle uh, more capacity and uh, storage related operations like uh, deduplication, replication, hot data operation, etc. Some of the industry leading storages are Dell EMC, HP, NetApp, etc. For this demo, we're going to use Windows Server 2016 as a storage. Now we have a storage in the design. The question is how you connect this storage with Hyper-V host. USB, Ethernet, CDL, fiber channel are some of the connection options that you see in a normal server. Other than this, there are SAS and fiber channel you might saw in some of the high-end servers. So to connect between a storage and a server, you can choose SAS, ISQC or fiber channel based upon the storage and the server you have. The easiest and the trending or the most adopted connectivity method is iSCSI because now these days Ethernets are much capable to handle higher bandwidth. So we are going to use iSCSI to connect between our Windows Server and storage in this demo. So let us understand about iSCSI. iSCSI is an IP based storage protocol which iSCSI SAN uses an ordinary network to transport this block level data between an iSCSI initiator on a server and an iSCSI target on a storage devices. So iSCSI initiator and iSCSI target are new terms those who are new to iSCSI. 
So the one who provide the capacity to a server is called a storage and that is known as iSCSI SCSI target and the one who gonna accept the capacity that is server which is known as iSCSI SCSI initiator. So these are the new terms that you have to get familiar when you learn iSCSI. SCSI. So when I say ordinary network to transport this block level data between an iSCSI SCSI initiator and a target which means you don't need to go around the server and find out a new kind of port for iSCSI communication. You can use the normal Ethernet port. You can run a cable from the Ethernet port of your server to a storage. And when you look at the design, you can see that I have separate lines for production network and storage network. So I'm going to use a separate network for storage and a separate network for production because I don't want to mix my production workloads with the storage network that comes in the best practice in terms of security and performance. So I need additional ports if I'm going to isolate uh, storage and the production workloads uh, and I have to have a dedicated subnet for production and storage network. I hope now you have a good understanding of uh, shared storage role in a Hyper-V failover cluster. Now let us learn about what is quorum in a failover cluster. If you are new to failover cluster in Microsoft, quorum might be a new term for you. Before we talk about quorum, let us see the importance. So let us, under let us understand why we need a quorum. As you see many servers running in the cluster in this picture, if one server fails, virtual machine will run on the other server automatically. That is what a failover cluster means. But there are some cases where a network communication failure between these nodes in the cluster may lead to a misunderstanding for each host in the cluster. So what will happen more than one node will think hey, it's time to take control of the resources as the other node is failed. And this could lead to many issues and uh, like the shared resources which are supposed to be accessed by one host at a time will try to access uh, multiple hosts at the same time. So this will result a split brain scenario. We call this scenario as a split brain scenario. Microsoft has introduced a mechanism called quorum which allows Windows Server failover clusters to resolve this issue. Quorum is not a technical term. In general, uh, like the government assemblies, uh, quorum is defined as the minimum number of members of an assembly that must be present uh, at any of meetings to make the proceedings of that meeting valid. In the same sense, uh, each host or nodes in the cluster have votes and more than half of the voters must be online and able to communicate with uh, one another to remain the cluster working. Now let us go through some of the examples for a better understanding. I have five Hyper-V hosts in the picture. Each Hyper-V host have one vote in the cluster group. So the minimum number of hosts need to be running to remain the cluster live is three because the concept is more than half of the members need to be live and running. So here two Hyper-V host has failed and three host is running. So this will remain the cluster live. When we have one more failure in the cluster, which means the majority has failed and only two in the cluster remain live. So this will remain the cluster offline. So each member in a cluster have one vote and if majority remain online, if they are able to communicate each other, then the cluster will be live and continue working. If the majority become offline, then the cluster stops working. I hope now the concept of quorum is clear. So each node in the cluster have one vote cluster remain online if majority nodes can see and communicate. That is clear. And this is accomplished by having an odd number of hosts in Windows Server failover cluster. Now if you have even number of nodes, we can make use of a witness disk. Let us see some of the options or some of the choices that provided by Microsoft for quorum configuration. The first one is node majority. This is what we saw in the example. Each node that participate in a cluster Hyper-V host have one vote. So if majority is alive, 
then the cluster will continue to work cluster remain online then we have node and disk majority so each node that participate in a hyper-v cluster have one vote in addition to that we are gonna add one disk to the quorum so you have uh, two hyper-v host for example you're gonna add an additional disk as a witness so that the total number of votes will be three and if one hyper-v host fail still there is a hyper-v2 and disk witness is uh, running they can see each other then the cluster remain online so this is how a node and a disk majority works you can replace the disk witness with a file share witness also the disk witness means you have to attach a volume and in the cluster you have to configure this disk gonna work as a witness in my cluster when it comes to node and a file share majority you have hyper v host as nodes that can vote and in addition to that they have to create a file share it can be an active directory server or it can be in a file server you can just create a folder and share it then in cluster configuration you configure a file share a folder as a witness so these two are one of the simplest option that you can configure it and one of the advantage with windows server 2016 is that you can configure azure cloud disk as a witness so that you can uh, create a storage account in microsoft azure and you can configure it in the cluster configuration to use the cloud disk as a witness in hyper-v cluster configuration and the final one is no majority disk only this is not uh, recommended because if you just use only disk and if something happened to the disk uh, uh, and the other hyper-v hosts are even running that is not going to help you because if we consider only disk in the quorum any failure to the disk witness gonna stop the entire cluster so these are the choices and uh, you can choose a node majority if you have odd number of servers you can use the node and disk majority in case of even number of servers and in the case of witness you have choices like a disk or file share or you can go for cloud disk witness also now the final part is about networking there are many traffic you need to consider when you have hyper-v and a failed over cluster we already discussed that we need a separate network for storage and for production network because your virtual machines files sit in the storage and as you use iSCSI for your storage connectivity between servers and storage you need to make sure that you have enough bandwidth between the connectivity of storage and server so it is better to dedicate one ethernet port for storage connectivity minimum and also go for 10 gbps connectivity in addition to that uh, cluster adds one more network requirement that is heartbeat we call it as a cluster network also which is for the internode cluster communication to check the liveness of uh, cluster members that means hyper-v host you don't need to dedicate one network card for cluster network you can combine cluster network and management network to one network card so that you can save uh, one network port because these days most of the servers comes with 10 gbps and sparing one single 10 gbps network card for a cluster network is not going to be a wise decision there are other traffic also like live migration virtual machine access that you need to design based upon your organization environment we spoke about all the requirements and uh, concepts that comes in windows hyper v failover cluster now it is time to move to the demo so look at the diagram in this demo i have two hyper v hyper v1 and hyper v2 that are joined to an active directory and i have a shared storage that connected to hyper v1 and 2 uh, through a separate network that is storage network and I have a production network to manage Hyper-V1 and Hyper-V2 and production network is the network that I have used to uh, connect it to Active Directory and we're going to use the same network for accessing virtual machine also. Then cluster heartbeat network that is uh, going to be uh, used for inter-cluster node communication to check the liveness of uh, Hyper-V host uh, for the cluster services. 
so this is the demo infrastructure and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, two iSCSI volumes in shared storage we call it as LAN and this LAN we need to connect to Hyper-V1 and Hyper-V2 so we have two logical unit uh, so we have two LAN one LAN is for virtual machine files and the other LAN is for disk witness as I have two Hyper-V host here we need to keep odd numbers so that we're gonna use disk witness so each Hyper-V host will have one vote and the disk witness will also have one vote so instead of disk witness we can also use file share or azure cloud witness so we're going to start with disk witness we're going to use uh, a small volume from shared storage as a disk witness in the beginning then once we complete the configuration i will show you how to change uh, if you want to use a file share as a witness or if you want to use azure cloud disk as a witness Look at the server storage and uh, Active Directory domain controller which are ready to start our lab. So what you can see are storage, two Hyper-V, two servers, then we have one domain controller. When you go to the network settings, you can see that I have three network cards, one for the storage and one for the internode cluster communication and one for the protection. And there is an additional virtual ethernet network card you see uh, that is for the vm access so we have three physical network interface here the same configuration you can see in all the hyper-v servers and we have one storage server and you can see in the storage i have only one connection now for the hyper-v servers uh, in general uh, you are supposed to have like two network card for storage connectivity between servers and uh, storage for high availability as this is for a demo purpose i have just one connection only let us start our hyper-v failover cluster configuration from storage in the storage server it's a windows server 2016 server i have added a physical hard disk then the next step is to prepare the disk uh, and then we're going to install iSCSI target server role then we have to create iSCSI share volumes and connect it to iSCSI uh, initiators that are available in Hyper-V host so that the shared storage volume going to be available so that the shared storage volume is visible for Hyper-V host 1 and 2. So let us see how to do this. Log into the storage server and you can see in the my computer I have only one disk available that is C drive. The newly added disk is in the disk management. You need to bring it online and initialize the disk. Then prepare a volume with a proper partition. I'm gonna give SAN volume for an understanding. Now the disk volume, the physical hard disk is ready and it is available in the my computer wizard now and it is available in the my computer window the next step is to install iSCSI target role for that go to the server manager then click on add roles and features click next then from the file and storage server once you expand it you will find iSCSI target server click add features then complete the wizard now the installation has completed and next we need to create iSCSI share volumes for that go to file and storage services in the server manager and you will find a new tab there iSCSI to create a new iSCSI share volume either you can click here or go to the task and find new iSCSI virtual disk option click on it now you can see that uh, select a virtual disk uh, location so I prepared one drive so let us select the drive which we prepared for iSCSI then enter a virtual disk name so this is going to be a witness disk with the capacity of 5 GB 
so give something like a quorum or witness disk and the size as I show in the slide I'm gonna give 5 GB uh, it can be fixed or dynamic or uh, differencing then click next so as this is a new server I'm gonna create a new iSCSI target so let's give a name for this uh, target as it is a storage server let us put name storage server then who gonna access this volume so you can see I have different options I can give DNS name IP address or MAC address but I'm gonna give IQ a name that is the address comes in iSCSI so if you want to add IP address you can just fill the IP address here then click OK let us do with IQN IQN is the iSCSI address so DNS IP address and MAC address you know how to get it for to get the IQN go back to the Hyper-V host so this is the Hyper-V host 1 then from the tools go to iSCSI initiator as I said Hyper-V host is the iSCSI initiator here and the storage is the iSCSI target as this is the first time you will get a new window like this just click yes now go to the last tab configuration and get the initiator name copy it then come back to the storage then add it here click ok repeat the same step for all the Hyper-V host you have for me I have uh, two Hyper-V host so I have logged into Hyper-V host 2 then go to the initiator then then find out the configuration tab copy the initiator name then go to storage server add it here now I give access to the volume to Hyper-V host now I give access to the volume to two Hyper-V host uh, Hyper-V1 and Hyper-V2 and uh, to, add, to identify the Hyper-V host I give IQ and name then click next then click to create this wizard now the iSCC volume for disk witness has completed let us repeat the same step for virtual machine files give a meaningful name for the disk I put just Hyper-V disk then click next then click next and uh, I'm gonna select the same iSCSI target so that uh, whatever the access that I have configured in the previous wizard for disk witness I will get the same uh, so just select the so just click next then you can review the configuration you can see who is the target and who is the access servers once you complete the wizard you can see that the disk witness and the virtual machine files disk both are ready the next step is to connect these disks to the Hyper-V host 1 and 2. So go to tools from Hyper-V host 1 then select iSCSI initiator then simply enter the IP address of your storage server here. Then click on quick connect. Done now you connected the volumes to Hyper-V host 1 if you go to the discovery portal you can see the IP address and port we have entered and you can see the volume list also and if you go to the files then from the disk you can see the two disk volumes that we have shared from the storage is here the 5 GB for the disk witness and the 70 GB sorry 75 GB for the virtual machine files 
let us go to the Hyper-V 2 because this is a shared storage volume we need uh, the same volume to be available in Hyper-V host 1 and Hyper-V host 2 so go to the iSCSI initiator then enter the IP address here now we connected and you can see from the discovery portal the IP address and port now go to the file and disk and from here you can see we have the same volumes available here now the shared volume is appearing to Hyper-V 1 and Hyper-V 2 host when I show you the network interface in storage server in this demo infrastructure you found that I have only one network card that brings a single point failure between servers and storages as the virtual machine files are in shared storage you need to have minimum two network cards as an alternative path if something happened to the first path so when you create a multiple connection between Hyper-V host and storage then you need to install MPIO that is multipath that is multipath IO this provides an alternative data path between storage devices and Windows operating system. Regardless of what storage you have, like if you have a NetTab or if you have a Dell EMC or HP, you need to have MPIO installed in Windows Server. Otherwise, if you create a disk, for example, of 10 GB and you provide initiator access in storage, and if you have two network interface then this 10 GB disk gonna appear two times in your Hyper-V host. So multipath IO will find it out as a one disk and it is shared via two network cards. So the, the secondary network gonna taken as an alternative path to connect to the storage. And you can have 32 alternative paths if you enable MPIO. And this provides redundancy and load balance. So let us see how to configure MPIO. So let us install MPIO for multipath. Go to add roles and features from Hyper-V host. Then click next. From the features you will find multipath IO. Then click next. Then click click on the installation button so you have to repeat this installation in all the Hyper-V host you have once you complete the MPIO feature installation go to tools then you will find MPIO from here discover multipath then select the MSFT then make appropriate selection then add it this requires a restart and you have to repeat the same step in all the Hyper-V hosts as we installed MPIO. Now let us prepare iSCSI volumes that we shared to Hyper-V host 1 and 2. So login back to Hyper-V host. Then from the server manager go to the file and storage services. Then go to disks. You can see we kept the two volumes untouched. So let us bring it online then initialize the disk then you can create uh, volumes now let us prepare the volume so right click and create a new volume select uh, disk for Hyper-V virtual machine files assign a letter you can give a meaningful name for your understanding like CSV disk or Hyper-V files disk something that makes sense for you then click to create close it then do the same for the disk witness click next then complete the wizard you don't need to repeat the same step in Hyper-V host 2 because we say it the same volume so doing this in one Hyper-V host is enough because we shared the same volume to other Hyper-V host also. 
So network configuration, all the network adapters are already configured with IP addresses. But let's go and do some of the best practice configurations. So for example, you don't need to register all the network cards in DNS and you don't need to have uh, IPv6 uh, for connectivity. So let us do that. Uh, so let us go and configure some best practices uh, in network adapters. So let's go to the Hyper-V host 1, then go to the production network. So the production network is the uplink. So let us select external virtual ether network. Then from here, go to the IPv4 advanced selections and from the DNS, make sure register this connection has enabled. And the other configuration you need to do is go to the Win tab, then make sure you enabled NetBIOS over TCP IP, then click OK. Then disable IPv6. So you made three selections that is all with the external adapter or the production adapter. Now the internode cluster go to the properties then go to advanced tab from the DNS do the opposite untick it then go to the wins tab then disable the NetBIOS over TCP IP. Repeat the same step for storage also. And you have to repeat the same step in all the Hyper-V host. So I explained in the beginning that Hyper-V failover cluster is a combination of two features. Hyper-V and failover cluster. So we're going to install these two roles now, Hyper-V and Failover Cluster. Open your Hyper-V servers. The first we're going to install Hyper-V role. I have already installed Hyper-V role in this. Anyway, to install the Hyper-V role, you have to go to Add Roles and Features from Server Manager. Then from the roles, you will find Hyper-V option. Select it and complete the installation. Once you complete the Hyper-V role installation in all Hyper-V servers, the next step is to prepare an external connection for your virtual machines that gonna run in the Hyper-V host. For that, go to Hyper-V manager. Then select virtual switch manager then select external network give a meaningful name something like external or production then click apply then ok now if you open the network connection window you will see there are three physical adapters and one virtual ethernet connection so this new virtual ethernet connection will appear once you have an external virtual switch in your Hyper-V manager. So we have done with the Hyper-V roles. The next step is to install failover cluster. So go to the add roles and features wizard, then find failover cluster, then click install. Repeat the same step in all Hyper-V host. Now we have completed all the roles and features that we need to have in, in a Hyper-V failover cluster. The next step is to configure the failover cluster and to place the, our workloads in the cluster. So before we place our critical workloads in the cluster, we have to validate our configuration and Microsoft offer a failover cluster validation in the failover cluster feature. So let's do that first. Go to server manager from Hyper-V host and find out failover cluster manager from tools. 
then you get a new failover cluster manager here the first step we're gonna do is to validate the configuration so click on it then click next add all the Hyper-V hosts that are gonna participate in the cluster so I have Hyper-V 1 and 2 where I installed the failover cluster feature so I'm gonna add Hyper-V host 1 and 2 to this validate cluster wizard then click next You have two options you can customize the test or you can run all the test i'm going to do all the test if you want uh, you can customize the test and you can run for specific like storage or or for the hyper v host or for the network or for the uh, disk iops like that now the validation has completed you can see a summary of the validation test and result here. To have a better insight, let us click on the view report option. Here you have a detailed uh, report of this validation. By this way, you can identify what are the best practices that you missed in your Hyper-V failover cluster configuration. You can reconfigure it, you can rerun the validation of failover cluster. So by this way, you can tune and you can have a best failover cluster for your organization. If you don't have more number of uh, cluster nodes to be added, you can simply uh, select this option. You can create the cluster using the nodes that you added from here. So once you click finish, a new window pop up to create the cluster. Or you can create the cluster from failover cluster manager. Right click and select create cluster. This will open up a create cluster wizard. Then click next. Then enter server name. Hyper-V1 and Hyper-V2 here. Then click next. Here you have to enter a cluster name and it create an active directory object in this uh, name what you have given here. Then enter an IP address you get a DNS record also for this automatically. So for example if I give hyper HA it gonna automatically create a hyper HA object in active directory and also it create a DNS record for the IP address that I'm gonna give you click next you can review the configurations here and you can see that add all eligible storages to the cluster this will add all the disks that are shared to all the Hyper-V host either you can do it uh, just by selecting here to show it manually I'm gonna skip it and uh, add it manually so let us complete this wizard you can see that the cluster creation is in progress now click finish now from the failover cluster manager you can see hyperha.abcd.com the new cluster that we have created you get a summary of your status of your cluster here when you expand it you can see roles nodes in the nodes you will see there are two Hyper-V, Hyper-V 1 and 2 then from the network you can see three networks are available one for the cluster and client and this is heartbeat network that is cluster only and storage is not a part of the cluster that is why it shows none and from the disk you can see there is no disk available in the cluster manager let us add the disk that we prepared you can see there are two disks which are shared to Hyper-V host 1 and 2 that is 79 GB and uh, 5 GB. So now both are added to cluster disk. The next step is to add the volume which we are going to place the virtual machine files to cluster shared volume. So here I have two capacity. One is uh, nearly 80 GB and the other one is 5 GB. So select the disk which we are going to place the virtual machine files and click add to the cluster volume. Now it is a cluster shared volume and leave the disk witness as it is. Now go to the cluster and let us configure disk witness. Now go and select the cluster it is time to configure the disk witness and quorum settings. 
go to more action then configure cluster quorum settings click next you can see there are multiple options you can choose one is select quorum witness which means it will show you what are the options that is available for quorum witness or you can go for a default quorum configuration as we prepare the disk witness it going to configure the cluster disk the shared disk as disk witness and you can see all nodes are configured to have quorum votes so that is the default configuration click finish now you can see I have votes for the host and I have a disk witness in quorum. So that part has done. Now all the configurations are done related to the failover cluster. Let us go and create our first virtual machine in failover cluster. So select roles, then right click, then go to virtual machines, then click a new virtual machine. Select the host that you want to run this virtual machine. Click next. This point is very important. You can give a meaningful name. Virtual machine, virtual machine HA something as it is a testing. Then you have to select store the virtual machine in different location. Browse it then go to C you will find a new cluster storage then inside that volume 1 so what I did now I placed my virtual machine files in a cluster storage volume this cluster storage volume is available or it is shared with other Hyper-V host also so that if there is any failure here the cluster storage is still accessible for other Hyper-V nodes so that they can start up the virtual machine. So make the proper selections for your virtual machines then complete the virtual machine creation wizard. Now the virtual machine is ready. It is running in the failover cluster. Now you can see the virtual machine is running in Hyper-V1. You can see the owner of the node is Hyper-V1. So I'm going to try to live migrate this virtual machine. That if we succeed with the live migration then which means that uh, the files are accessible and uh, the connections everything is fine so I'm gonna move to Hyper-V2 before you do the live migration make sure that you don't have any resources attached which is out of the cluster shared volume so I just disconnected the ISO that I connected for the installation then go to the live migration node then select the Hyper-V2 you can see that the migration is very fast because there is nothing to transfer all the files are accessible for the other node and the maximum timeout I'm gonna face here is 2 ping so if that is acceptable for your application then you can go for Hyper-V failover cluster for providing high availability of your virtual machines you can move back this virtual machine uh, to Hyper-V1 you can see that uh, the live migration is very quick as it is accessing from a shared storage volume now let us see what will happen if the Hyper-V2 which is the owner of this virtual machine at this moment if the Hyper-V2 goes fade down what will happen let's see so I'm gonna shut down Hyper-V2 and the virtual machine is running in Hyper-V2 at this moment. So shutting down, if you go back to Hyper-V1, you can see that there is a quick live migration is going on. And let us see what the drops we are gonna face here. We have only one request timeout. So if, as I said, if this is acceptable for you, for your application, then Hyper-V failover cluster is the best option 
for high availability of your application. When we discussed about cluster quorum configuration, we said there are different way of configuring a disk witness. So disk witness can be a shared volume like what we did from a shared storage or it can be a file share also or a Azure cloud witness also. So let us see how we can reconfigure a cluster quorum settings to a file share volume. You can go to more action then cluster quorum configuration then select the quorum witness here you can change or add new configurations you can see that a disk witness this is what we done at this moment then a file share or a cloud witness or you can leave the quorum witness untouched and you can use the hyper-v host only so i need to provide a file share path here i'm gonna do this with the domain controller i'm gonna create a folder and share it to the failover cluster create a disk witness then share it with administrator for example then so i'm done and now if you go back and give this same path even if this uh, file share is visible uh, to Hyper-V host one and failover cluster, you will end up with an error. Let's see what is the error. The permission for the administrator is not enough. We need to give permission for Hyper-HA. That means the object which created when we create a cluster configuration, you need to give permission for Hyper-HA object also. So go to the properties and from the sharing security, you will find Hyper-HA, but you don't have enough permission allowed. So let us give proper permissions for Hyper-HA. I'm going to give a full control, for example, then click OK. Now, if you go and try to configure the cluster configuration quorum, with the file share it gonna work so let's try to reconfigure it select uh, the quorum witness then click next select uh, file share witness then click next and complete this wizard now you can see the configuration for file share witness has completed successfully. So the final option that we have here is to configure with Azure cloud witness or Azure cloud disk. So let's see how to do that. So from the quorum witness, go to cloud witness option, select it, then click next. Now you can see that uh, I have to enter storage account name and storage account key. Let's go to Microsoft Azure and create a storage account and get the storage account key and complete the wizard. Let us log into Microsoft Azure. Then click to create a storage account. I have storage account in my favorite so just click to create the storage account then click on create storage account option then fill up the details like uh, create a new resource group or use an existing one then give a storage account name here then select the location keep the performance option standard select uh, general storage uh, purpose version 1 then local redundant storage option then click ok once the validation complete Create the storage, 
now the storage account has created what we need from this uh, window is the storage account name and access key so go to the access key option copy the storage account name and the first key key one so let's go back to the Hyper-V failover cluster manager window enter the account name and also repeat the same for the key value also now you can complete the wizard and this will configure cloud witness as your witness disk in Coro. thank you for watching this video for more videos subscribe my youtube channel